So next, we will proceed with the last part of this training, which is the SD-WAN solution, brief introduction. So basically, in SD-WAN solution, okay, we will have three types of channel. Okay. Okay, before I talking about this, so what is SD-WAN solution? SD-WAN solution, basically our iMaster NC will centrally manage all the device, devices, okay? And it will help to establish the overlay tunnels throughout the WAN network, okay? Okay, throughout the net network. So, okay, in our SD-1 solution, we have management channel, control channel, and data channel. So, the, the management channel is used to manage the devices. As you can see from our iMaster NC, we will use net control the VPE channel actually helps to control the establishment of IP overlay tunnels and transmit service route. So basically the control channel helps to control. For example, it will control CPE one and CP2 two. It will control how, whether these two will form a GRE tunnel or not. So this is how the bit, how the control channel works. And lastly is the data channel. Okay, basically the data channel is the channel that we, which we will use to forward the data. So for example, when the CPE one want to configure, want to communicate with CPE two, okay, it will go through the data channel, okay, to communicate. Okay, so here again, we have three types of channel, management channel, control channel, and data channel. Okay. Okay, so next. Okay, so these are some of the components that you need to know inside SD-WAN solution. So in SD-WAN solution, first we will have our iMaster NC. Okay, the iMaster NC will manage and control the entire SD-WAN network, okay? It will perform monitoring, o &M, and network configuration. So from NC campus, it will manage all the devices through the management channel, and it will send the configuration. It will monitor the devices. Okay, route reflector, RR, okay? Route re reflector, we also call it as area controller, okay? So what is the function of route reflector? The route reflector actually help to distribute the VPN routing and tunnel information between each devices. Okay, so basically here, okay, our each devices will actually advertise, okay, advertise the VPN routing and tunnel information to our RR. So once our RR receives this information, it will reflect, reflect this information to each edge. And then once the edge re receive this information, okay, then they will start to create, okay, start to establish the GRE over IPsec tunnel to each other. Okay, so this is what the router do. The router connecting to all the uh, internal networks such as connecting to HQ. Okay, we have the router which connecting to a LAN network on the branch side, okay. And for the and we have another one we call it as gateway. Actually, the edge and gateway is similar, except here. Okay, behind we will have the legacy network where we have used the traditional. We will have our traditional, okay, traditional network. And in our okay in for edge we will have our VXLAN network. Okay, we have our VXLAN network used as used for the LAN network. Okay, so here we have iMaster NC, Route Reflector, H, and Gateway. Okay, so next is some of the basic concept that you need to know in SD-WAN solution. Okay, so basically uh, these are some of the terms in SD-WAN solution. The first one is transport network, okay? Transport network actually refer to the WAN access network provided by ISP, okay? For example, in this table, we have the MPRS provided by ISPA. This is one transport network. And then we have internet provided by another ISP, 
this is another transport network. And then we have another internet provided by SSPC. This is the third transport network. Okay. So basically the transport network is just the network which used to transfer, transport the data from one location to another location. So this is what it means by transport network. And then next, next is the routing domain. Okay. Basically routing domain is the types of routing domain. Okay, that we use in, inside the network. For example, here we have MPLS as a routing domain, and then here both are the same. We have the internet as routing domain. So basically, in in our SD WAN solution, usually we only have MPLS and internet as the routing domain. Okay. So thirdly, we have the site ID. Site ID is just Basically, this site ID is just used to identify the site. For example, for HQ, we give them the ID AAA. For branches, we use the, we, give, we give them the site ID name PBB CCC. So this one is just used to identify the sites. Okay. And next is CPE router ID. Basically, in CPE router ID is the router ID for the CPE. Okay. Usually, we will use the loopback. Okay. Loopback IP as the router ID. Okay, and in different scenario, we can have two CPE and two router ID in each side. Okay, next next term is the WAN link. WAN link is basically just the link which connect to the WAN network. Okay, so all this link that connect to the internet or connect to the MPLS, we call it as WAN link. And lastly, the last thing that you need to need is TMP. We call it as transport, transport protocol. Okay, TMP, transport network protocol. Okay, so transport network ports. So basically, the ports we call it as transport network ports. For example, this port is connecting to MPLS transport network. So this one, we call it as transport network ports. Okay, transport network ports. Okay. And inside the transport network ports, we will include the site ID, the CPE router ID, the transport network ID, public IP address. Okay. So all these network ports sending information. Okay. So, Next, okay. Next will be the overall SD1 network process flow. Okay. So basically, in our SD1 network process, we will have first, we will establish the management channel. And then, after we establish the management channel, we will establish the control channel. Once the data is established, okay, for management channel establishments, basically first we have our network administrator log in into our iMaster NCE. So in our iMaster NCE, they will configure the WAN link, okay, information. After they configure all the WAN link information, right, okay, in our iMaster NCE, it will be able to generate a URL, okay, URL, and send it to the installation engineer. So this installation engineer will bring the device to the site and then it will just connect this, okay, connect the device physically to the transport network and it will log into this switch, it will log into the switch and paste the URL, paste the URL, okay. And then once the URL is, is paste inside the switch, okay, all configuration or the switch, will, the edge will automatically, the edge will automatically register with the NC campus and it will automatically form the management channel. Okay, basically this one, this URL, right? The URL we use, this one is actually used for ZTP. ZTP, we call this as zero touch provisioning. Okay, zero touch provisioning. Okay, so this URL allow us to achieve these features. Okay, so by just using this URL, by just using this URL, 
our H device will automatically configure the WAM ports and it will automatically form the management channel with the NC campus. So everything will be automatically, okay, without any configuration. Hello. Tom. Tom, your voice breaking. So, okay. So again, again, first the network administrator will log into our NC. Okay, and he will configure the WAN link, WAN link information, WAN link information. So once we configure all the WAN link information, it will generate a URL. URL, okay, and this URL will be sent to our engineer. So this engineer will take this URL and his device to the site, and he will just connect this device to the transport network, okay, maybe MPLS or internet, okay. So once it connect, connect to this network, the engineer will log into this switch and use the URL, okay. He will log into this switch using the URL, and our sorry, not switch our router. So our router will automatically configure using the ZTP, ZTP. Uh, we call it as zero touch provisioning. Okay. So it will automatically configure and it will automatically register with our NCE devices. Okay. So after, after you paste the URL, okay, after you paste the URL, okay, or it will automatically generate the management channel. So next, after it generates the management channel, okay, our iMaster NC will deliver the configuration to the H devices and RR to establish the DTRS channel. So now, after the management channel is up, okay, if our iMaster, iMaster, okay, for example, our NC at here, it will send the configuration, okay, to all the devices. We send to all the devices, and then this, these devices will start to establish the DTRS channel. Okay, once this DTRS channel is established, they will start to share the TMP, the okay, the transport, transport network ports information and IPsec SA information. Okay, to the RR. Okay, so once the RR receives these two information, it will start to form the BGP channel. Uh, wait, let me share again because there's some issue. Okay. Okay, so after it received the TMP and IPsec assay information, okay, they will start to establish, the R will start to establish the BGP control channel. Okay. So now, okay, once they establish this BGP control channel, now, our H will start to send the information, the TMP information, IPsec SA information, and service round information to our RR. And our RR will reflect this information to another H. Okay. So once the H receives this information, they will, they will start to establish the data channel. And then now the data channel is established, the H will be able to communicate with each other to the data channel. Okay, so these are the overall process. Okay, overall process for SD WAN network processing. First, establish management channel. Second, control channel, and lastly, data channel. Okay. So yeah, I think that's all for today training session. So if you have any question, you can open your mic and ask.